In this movie I want to talk about what is known as white card rendering where you might take a model that has some textures and colors applied to it and strip those off to produce a more generic render or possibly even a construction document. And in this particular movie I'm going to be referring to an elevation view more so than a 3D ISO or perspective view. So if we look at this uh, little model here, we've got a texture on the roof, we've got some colors on the walls, and uh, there's a sky in the background. And we'll be going through a series of slight variations to this, which I'll just run through there. Um, and I, I'll discuss how you can produce uh, the various subtleties of those different um, appearances. So, first I'll talk a little bit about this setup here. Uh, this is a, uh, a conventional viewport in a front view. It has a custom render works render mode and the background render settings uh, to show textures and colors. And uh, I've, I've tweaked these settings a little bit here. It also has a render works background, which is sky background. And it also has a foreground render style which is set to hidden line and that's what's producing the lines around the edge of the uh, render here. So let's go now and look at the first variation of this. So we'll go to our next viewport. And what I've done here is to apply a standard render work style via the object info palette and you'll see here uh, background render, render style, and this is set to realistic colors white, and this is a standard render work style that ships uh, with render works. And you can see that all of the color and texture has been taken out of the, the model. You can see there's still some variation on these walls here, um, and we'll talk about how that's achieved. And you can also see that there is a background that is white at the top or very pale grey at the top and moving down to a slightly darker grey at the bottom. Now in addition to that render style I have also added the hidden line foreground render and if we click on the foreground render settings button you'll see that I've also asked to sketch the hidden line results and that's what's giving me the overlaps at the end of the lines and that the fact that the, these lines are not quite straight. And the sketch hidden line results is using the certain uh, sketch style. And I have tweaked those settings a little bit and if we have a look at that you'll be able to see what I've done. I've changed the overstrike slightly, I've reduced the randomness of the overstrike and I've increased the stroke of the wobble a little bit uh, to produce this particular style. So that's the the basic uh, setup of the style or of the of the view. Let's take a look now at this render work style. Now when you choose a render work style a resource is imported into your drawing that defines that style and as a resource you're able to view that in the resource browser and you'll see here that we have our normal sections in the uh, resource browser and by the way I'm viewing this resource browser as thumbnails so if you're not seeing it like this and you want to you'll need to change it from list to thumbnails so what we want to look at here is render styles and this is the one that's applied to this model here so let's uh, have a look at this right click and choose edit so first of all you'll notice that textures and colors are turned off and that's the way that you can uh, prevent any texture or color coming through on the model that's fairly straightforward and it also uses the realistic type of render mode as opposed to the artistic type render mode if we look at the quality settings, uh, you can see that most of them are on low except for anti-aliasing and indirect lighting. Under lighting, and this is important, this is uh, 
this these settings here are what's producing the the tone the gray tone on these walls here and the fact that it's darker up in these corner areas just as it would be in the real world as opposed to down here where it's uh, in the in the brighter light now indirect lighting and environment lighting really mimics what happens in the real world because although we have a heliodon that is producing these shadows here or a direct light a direct sunlight um, the what happens in the real world is that when the sun hits the atmosphere there are little particles in the atmosphere that disperse the light so there's always light just coming from the sky and when you choose indirect lighting and environment lighting that's exactly what happens and for this which the the style has exterior one bounce which means that the light coming from the sky and the sun will come down and bounce once off a surface and then back onto the other surfaces it'll do that just once normally in, in you can increase that for other situations like interiors but for exteriors one bounce is normally all you need and then there are a number of different HDRI uh, that you can HDRIs that you can choose and the one that, that's been used here is the HDRI white and this is basically just a white sky and that's what uh, what is producing the additional lighting here ambient lighting you'll notice is turned off um, and then there's a background that's called a white background when you use this render work style uh, a render works background you'll see here render backgrounds will be introduced into your file and you can always edit that resource now this particular white background if we click the edit resource button I can do that from this edit render render work style dialog or I could right click on it in the resource browser produces the same result you'll see that this white background is actually a two color background which you can customize so there's white at the top and light gray at the bottom so we're going to look at uh, a few different ways that you can adjust these settings to produce uh, subtle variations of this white card rendering style so let's go ahead and do that we'll click OK and just leave that one as it is and go to the next layer and this one we're going to look at the background so all I've done to change uh, this particular style is to edit the background and this one if we click on it you'll see here uh, the background render is set to realistic colors white background and so I've duplicated this render style here and and just tweaked it a little bit and if we edit that style okay the render works white uh, realistic colors white background and this is it here so if we edit that and all I've done is to create a new background and to create the new background I, I duplicated the previous one renamed it and I set the top color to be a blue a bluish gray color and the bottom to be white and that's what's producing this difference between the two if you want to keep it all white then you can just adjust the uh, the colors yourself or you can just drop out the background altogether and if you drop out the background altogether it will just be white and you can do that by uh, choosing to have no background in the uh, render work style so the next change I want to look at is the environment lighting and what I've done here is to tone down or, or to turn down the brightness of the HDRI white sky that's that's emitting light onto the model and let's just toggle between the two views so this is the standard one and you can see if we toggle between them that the walls are quite a bit darker here but they still have that nice sort of gradient effect with the bright uh, brightness in the corner here and the darkness up here and so let's take a look at how that was achieved and again I created a, a different render work style for this and if we edit this style and go to lighting you'll see that I have actually edited the HDRI white I duplicated it and what I did was to 
crank the brightness down from I think it's around 65% all the way down to 5% and when you do that then there's going to be less impact from this environment lighting and these walls are going to be a darker shade. Now if you don't want that then you can bump this back up again and you'll see that if I do that if I bring it up to say 77 click OK and I re-render this you're going to see that these walls will be a lot whiter um, or a lot lighter I should say but you're still getting that nice sort of graduation of color up here under the eaves which uh, which looks kind of uh, kind of nice one thing I forgot to mention on the original uh, or standard one if we just jump back to that for a moment is that the heliodon that's producing uh, the sun is set to soft shadows and again this mimics the real world because the further away a shadow gets from the shadow casting object the more fuzzy the shadow gets and you can see that the shadows at the bottom of these uh, pergola or this pergola here are fuzzier than they are right up here when it's close to the eave that's that's um, or the edge that's casting the shadow now if you want crisp shadows then certainly you can uh, turn that off and you would do that in the Heliodon and the Heliodon's back on the design layer so if you do want to turn the shadows off you need to go back to the design layer and you'll see that when you select the Heliodon soft shadows is turned on here so you would turn that off if you wanted to get those hard edged shadows and I've actually done that in the final one of these that I want to look at which is the shadows one and uh, you can see here that the uh, the shadows don't have that fuzziness along the bottom edge the, the the slight pixelation that you can see here is caused by the fact that I have a fairly low DPI set for this sheet layer they're all set to 72 DPI you can see here normally you'd have them probably a bit more than that 150 or something but I just wanted to keep the renderings fairly snappy so in this final one we've used a different render work style again uh, that I have tweaked so let's edit that style and see what I've done to create the, the differences firstly you'll notice that the sketch is turned off so we're getting a harder edge uh, or a definite sort of line around the edges and you'll see that I've turned indirect lighting off so there's no indirect lighting and there's no environment lighting so the only light that's coming onto this model is coming from the Sun but what I have done is to uh, turn on the ambient light and that has the effect of lightening the shadows here so let's just see what happens if I turn the ambient light off and I'll re-render this and you'll see that the shadows will get very dark and normally that's not what you want you want to see some definition up here if you want the shadows to be a lot lighter then you can turn the ambient light on and set its brightness even higher click OK and update that and you'll see that that causes the shadows to get a lot lighter but you can see without the environment lighting the shadows are not there's no variation in the shadows uh, they're just and that may be the effect that you want but but uh, if you do want that variation in the shadows and the slight uh, dark darker shadow up here in the corners then you would need to use the environment lighting now the other thing you can do is to um, vary the brightness of the heliodon that can also have an effect on the model um, because it will basically make everything that's not in shadow uh, a lot brighter um, but if you've turned off the environment lighting then uh, and colors and textures are already turned off then you're not going to see any benefit from making that uh, that lighter in this particular instance but you will see that in something like this we'll go back to the design layer and I'll select that Heliodon and make it brighter say 150 percent we'll go back 
here again and update it. And what's going to happen is that the brightness of that light because there's uh, environment lighting and one bounce that bright light is bouncing on the ground and back up uh, under here and it's causing the shadows to, to wash out but again if you control that effect um, you can get a kind of a nice kind of you know watercolory effect if, if, if that's the kind of thing that you're trying to uh, to achieve so probably if we went back and and just didn't increase it by quite that much say 120 and then we update this the shadows are going to get a little bit darker but still be quite subtle so they're the uh, they're basically the settings that you can use to control the various aspects of these white card renderings so hopefully that will give you some good ideas.